Good morning and welcome to Emmanuel Lutheran Church here in Saratoga, California. Uh, I welcome you on this seventh Sunday of Easter. In the words, Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. This is now our 11th uh, Sunday virtual service that we are putting out there. Thank you for joining us. Let us pray. Good, gracious, and glorious God, we thank you for your faithful and abiding presence with us this day. We thank you for your life-giving word that brings us comfort, hope, and inspiration. Lift our spirits now and praise before you, for you alone are worthy to receive all glory, honor, and praise. Amen. Today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Our opening musical selection is Brightly Beams, Our Father's Mercy.
Thank you, Elizabeth, for that opening piece, uh, sharing with us your gifts. Uh, we continue with our church and community announcements. Uh, we come together uh, during this time, a very somber time, as here in our nation, we are nearing 100,000 deaths due to the COVID virus. Uh, worldwide, we have surpassed more than 5 million affected cases. And on this Memorial Day weekend, we remember those who in our country paid the ultimate price. Uh, we appreciate their bravery, their courage, and their service. Blessed be their memory in our midst. I urge you during this time of sheltering in place to be compliant, please, with the guidelines uh, mandated by the shelter in place order. As followers of Christ, let us keep the other in mind and be examples of our Lord in faithfulness and care in the community. Use this time wisely to grow in your devotion to our Lord, uh, to grow in your appreciation of one another and your gratitude for the gift of life and the gift of health. Uh, if you're watching at nine o'clock on Sunday morning, I invite you to join us for a live virtual uh, interactive time on Zoom starting about 9.30 this morning. Um, where you can have real-time conversation. Uh, please check the church website, which you will see below on the screen now, uh, for daily devotions that are posted there on the website by 9 o'clock each day. Uh, thank you for participating in our community in this way. You're also invited to join us live for Bible study via Zoom, Wednesdays at 10 o'clock in the morning or Thursdays at 6.30. And please, if you have needs or if your neighbors do, if you know of someone in need, let us know. We have people who are uh, ready and willing to serve. An update on a member of our faith community named George. It has been more than 10 weeks ago that he was diagnosed with COVID-19. He continues his recovery at Los Gatos Acute Rehab Center, where he is working hard at PT and OT. He has a steep road to recovery ahead of him, but there is good news. By the end of next week, he is expected to go home to be with his wife and to continue his recovery there. We thank God for his miraculous healing and for uh, perseverance to be given to both of them. Happy birthday today to a congregational member named Joe. Uh, we thank God for you and pray that God will richly bless you today and in the coming year with all that is good. And I would like to express my gratitude on behalf of the whole congregation for your ongoing commitment to the ministry and mission of our Lord in and through Emmanuel Lutheran Church, for your faithfulness in reaching out to others in the community by, and for sharing your ongoing financial support, uh, both through the mail and online. If you are new to our church community or visiting us this morning and would like to join us in our mission, you can go to the church website, probably where you found this video, and uh, there you can uh, make a donation either through PayPal or Givelify. Thank you very much for your generosity. And finally, if this is of benefit to you, please do pass it on to others. Uh, simply copy and paste the link uh, that brought you here and uh, share that with others. Uh, we thank you for joining us in this time. The reading from God's holy word today, according to the book of Acts, the first chapter, the first 14 verses, according to St. Luke. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, 
But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking up into the sky? The same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Here ends the reading for today. Dearly beloved of God, grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. This morning in the book of Acts, we read, we find recorded the last words of our Lord Jesus. The last words. Not too long ago, I submitted my doctoral dissertation, which had to do with last word speeches. And so perhaps for that reason, because I was focused so much upon last word speeches, I was drawn to this passage before us today uh, to share with you uh, from this passage God's word for us. The very last words of Jesus recorded for us that he speaks to his disciples. Because it happens in the middle of the week, it is not often that we celebrate the ascension of our Lord into heaven. The ascension takes place 40 days after the resurrection. 40 days, that number 40, of course, a very biblical number. A period of time that is set apart from all other times that marks it as holy and special, memorable, sacred, a time to be remembered. After Easter, for 40 days, Jesus appears to his disciples, on and off. The resurrection appearances are not to convey that Jesus would be physically present with the disciples now and forever. The resurrection appearances reassure the followers of Jesus that he had defeated the power of death and that in him, they too could be assured that there was more to their existence than what they could see before them. This this was good news for them, for you, and for me. Jesus gave them many convincing proofs of his presence, powerful and persuasive events. Jesus had spoken to them. He showed them his hands and his side, scars from his suffering, marks of his crucifixion. He ate and drank with them, even as it makes mention in this passage. He did things that no spirit could do. It was the same Jesus, once crucified, but now resurrected and alive in their midst. Jesus hinted of a gift that would soon be given the disciples. They would be baptized with the Holy Spirit. But he also told them, not now, not yet. They must wait. I find it very interesting that the disciples ask no question about this baptism. It was something new after all, and it would be something big. But why was it that they asked no questions about it? Because the disciples had something else on their minds. There were perhaps others, but there was one nagging question that simply would not leave them. No matter what they did, no matter how they tried, they could not banish it from their brains. They were stuck in a mental construct. Is it at this time, they ask? Is it at this time that you are going to restore the kingdom to Israel? These were their expectations. Jesus was the son of David after all. David, the great king that ruled over the people Israel. Jesus was a descendant of this David, 
He was of the royal line. He was even born in David's city, Bethlehem. The disciples were looking for the restoration of the royal rule of Israel. They'd been waiting for the time when Israel would throw off their oppressors and Israel would be the top dog, the nation above all other nations. Isn't this what it was all about, Jesus? We never expected you to die first and then come back to rule. We still can't figure that out. Perhaps the disciples had no questions about the gift of the Holy Spirit because they were expecting different kinds of gifts. Royal robes and crowns, scepters and swords and thrones and earthly power, deserved earthly power, long and overdue earthly power. These were their expectations. And this is why Peter had such a hard time when Jesus first told them that he was going to go to Jerusalem, where he would be rejected, where he would suffer, and where he would die. This is why the silence of Jesus before Pontius Pilate was so notable. This is why the crucifixion was so unfathomable, no matter how many times Jesus told them that this was what was going to happen. The disciples needed a new perspective. 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 Their perspective needed to change. Is it at this time you're going to restore the kingdom to Israel, they asked. Don't you worry about that, Jesus says. God will manage his kairos time. It is he who sets the seasons, and times are fixed by God's own authority. The time is in his hands. And these events will not come about according to any earthly timetable. Kingdom restoration? These are divine matters of the Father's own prerogative. Yours is to manage the chronos. To you belongs the responsibility of carrying out my commission, the commission that I've given you. You shall be my witnesses far and wide. But first, first, God's Holy Spirit will be given to empower you. But when? When will that happen, Jesus? Soon. Soon. Well, we know what that feels like, to not know when. We know what that feels like to have to wait. When will it happen, we ask. Lord, is it at this time that you're restoring the building to your church? We want to get to it have at it, open our doors and gather the community. We want to make it happen. But Jesus says, wait. Wait, trust me, don't preempt me. Not many days from now, my Father will pour forth the Spirit upon you and you will be empowered. And when that happens, you will experience things like you have never experienced them before. You will be my witnesses, not just here in Jerusalem. You will move out to other places and interact with other people. You know, it has been amazing during this COVID-19 season of the doors that God has opened, the opportunities we have had placed before us that we never thought we would have. Putting these broadcasts out into the internet and having people view from different places who were not able to view before, it is amazing the doors that God has opened up. Your eyes will be lifted higher so that you will see further and you will be my witnesses, Jesus says, to the ends of the earth. You will tell what you know, share what you've seen, proclaim what you've heard, and convey what you have experienced. These are the last recorded words of Jesus spoken to his disciples. They're words not to be forgotten, 
but words to be taken seriously. You will be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. Tell what you know, share what you've seen, proclaim what you've heard, convey what you have experienced. The followers would become witnesses. The disciples would become apostles. Sent to carry on the Lord's mission and ministry, commissioned to continue his service of teaching, healing, and preaching. It was Christ's ministry after all, even as it is his today. It was Christ's church back then, even as it is this day. And then after having said this, Jesus was taken up and it was all over, but it was just beginning. They stared up into the sky, the last place they had seen him before the cloud came to take him away. At least that's how they remembered it taking place, the best they could describe it. And while they stood looking up into the sky, two angels in white appeared before them and asked, why? Why are you standing here? Why are you concerned? This is God's doing. This is his domain. You don't have to worry about the how or the when. Those matters are divinely determined and they're in God's good hands. What to do now? Your job is to wait, to wait, to pray, to prepare yourselves for the gift that God will soon give you. Your lives are about to change in a big way, and you have a mighty work to do, and it will require mighty power from on high. The ascension of Jesus is not about the location of our Lord. It signifies his unity with the Father, the divine affirmation of his job completed on earth, and the authority he has been given. The hymn writer declares, his is no earthly kingdom, it comes from heaven above. His rule is peace and freedom and justice, truth and love. So let your praise be sounding for kindness so abounding. Hosanna to the Lord, for he fulfills God's word. Until that day comes, that day fixed by the Father by his own authority, until that day comes when our Lord returns and brings a close to this age and ushers in a new, let us faithfully be about his business. The kingdom of God requires no buildings and no earthly thrones. The kingdom of God increases as his spirit moves about in the hearts of his people. The kingdom of God grows when the good news of Jesus is proclaimed far and wide, beyond every border, and held fast by all of God's beloved people. Tell what you know, share what you've seen, proclaim what you've heard, convey what you've experienced, and may God be honored and glorified now and forever. Amen. Thank you.
Thank you very much, uh, Lauren and Elizabeth, uh, sharing your gift of music with us. And now let us turn our hearts to God in prayer. Almighty God, we give you thanks and praise for the joy of this Easter season. We thank you for the good news of the resurrection of our Lord and what that means for us. Your faithful presence with us in the midst of these days and that because he lives, so shall we live and that neither death nor life, neither things present nor things to come shall be able to separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. We lift up before you this day those in special need of your healing touch and the assurance of your presence in their lives. We pray for Dick and Don and Dorothy, for Frank, George and Greg, for Jace, Jody, Josephine and Sam, for May, Nancy and Thelma. During these days of COVID-19, we pray that you would be especially with those in New York, New Jersey, and Massachusetts bearing the brunt of this crisis. Be with those who suffer the disease as well as those who grieve the loss of loved ones. Be with the decision makers, grant them wisdom. Be with healthcare workers, giving their very best that is in them. Be with food providers and all those working behind the scenes to keep our community working. Grant all your people patience and steadfastness and help us to use this time wisely. We pray for recovery, for cure, for a vaccine, that you would draw us all together, even as you draw us to yourself. On this Memorial Day weekend, we now pause for a moment of silence to remember those who have served our country and who have given their lives to defend our country and to preserve our peace. Blessed be their memory in our midst. We thank you for the wonderful gift you have given to us and those who celebrate their birthdays this coming week. We pray that you would bless them richly in the coming year with all that is good. We remember before you Aileen, Bren, Irene, Joe, John, Owen, and Scott. We pray also that the memory of Walter Fulday would be blessed in our midst a dear saint gone from our midst, but by your grace present with you now. We pray for those who are in authority over us, especially this day for Senators Harris and Feinstein, that you would grant wisdom, guidance, and insight, humility, and strength. Be with our sister congregation, Prince of Peace, and pastors Nate and Sarah, for the ministry taking place within and beyond their church walls for missionaries Dan and Barrett serving in Columbia, and for all those who grieve the loss of loved ones, including the Chin family and caregivers Victoria and Dorothy, the Hoffner, Kyle, Moyer, and Wallace families. Comfort them with your presence and strengthen their faith in your promises of everlasting life. All these spoken prayers and the silent prayers of our hearts we lift before you, trusting in your mercy as we join together in the prayer you taught your disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, thank you again for joining us uh, for this service. And now receive the benediction, the words of the Apostle Paul, to the Church of God in Rome. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now please enjoy this final music uh, from Anton Nell. Thank you, Anton, for sharing your gifts with us.